chef for uh, God, oh, 16 years now. Um, this is a, probably around this, and I lost count, probably like the sixth or seventh early scene, probably the, the third or fourth as a professional. Uh, but I've always been active in chef. I'm the, currently the president of Chef Houston. It's great to be here. It's great to see all the work that has gone into this conference and uh, welcome, want to welcome everybody and make sure that everybody has a great time. Uh, we learn a lot from the workshops. Uh, we connect with people, develop our chapters, develop ourselves as individuals. It's just a great opportunity to come together. I call it the small version of the National Conference. My name is Jacqueline Silva Martinez. I'm working at NASA, the Flight Operations Directorate, and I'm here to support the CHEP event uh, with these workshops. Uh, I've been a CHEP member since I was in college, too, so uh, working through these um, outreach events for high school students and college students, too, are very important to see where uh, our Hispanic community is going to go into higher education. It's very important to have a higher degree and also even go for your master's and, and doctorate in this company. Competitive uh, environment. So SHEP allows you to, to do that and to learn that ahead of time uh, before you even get to college or go to the workforce. I love all the great like scholarship opportunities and not to mention we as a chapter back in home, back home in Tamiyu, we do a lot of volunteering and stuff and we get to meet people in the community and a lot of people are very confused. They're like, SHIP, what does it stand for? And we kind of put ourselves out there and once they find out, they become so interested and we like talk to them about it and like I don't know I like that people get excited with things like this you know like people in the community they get excited with organizations that like pertain to diversity and stuff like that. The main reason to come to RNDC I mean really it's an added benefit I mean I can really credit my uh, like you know where I'm at today as far as I graduated I graduated you know and I'm blessed to have a, a job and you know I'm doing I'm I think I'm doing well in my job uh, and I can really credit that all to SHIP because of all the the, the workshops that they have you know, I still go back and look at those some notes and, and lessons learned, and I'm always like, I, I go to new workshops and and I oh, I learned that in ship. Ship is great. You you learn you learn a lot of technical things in school, but I think when when you're in ship and you go to all these workshops that talk to you about not only leadership but life in general, you kind of learn a lot of street smart things, and you learn all these networking things that I mean, they are important and. You, you, you would sometimes think that only all the technicals, all those formulas you learn in class are important, but these, this side of your career also has some relevance to your life in general. So I went to the Nationals, Baltimore, and I, we were like 20 students. I, I just saw all my friends, at least more than half of them, getting interviews on the spot. More than one interview. I'm an international student. I got a job through SHIP because big companies come to SHIP. Big companies are interested in SHIPs. <laughs> Seek the opportunities to develop and to improve. And most of those are not going to come just through books. You're the only physics teacher in this high school, and I will take physics. So someone in here is going to figure out how that is going to happen. Moral of that story is stand up for yourself. I mean, 13, I'm short. 13, you don't, don't let anybody, anybody do that to you no matter what age you are. Nothing, you shouldn't have to go. You will be well on your way to passing the PMP exam, basically. So this chart, kind of, you see across the top, you've got the five process groups. It's important to restore basic conditions and bring the, the area, your workplace, your equipment to its optimal condition. That's what shining is about. You have to have the young freshmen, and you got to encourage them to be in those leadership positions. So you're just kind of growing, continuing, growing your leadership pool. That's that's how some of the strong chapters survive. Having that openness to listen to, whether it be you know a janitor or a CEO, um, all the ranges in between, you never know or uh, can expect the different kinds of ideas um, or even feedback. Someone may have a huge experience in a, in a field that you may have never even known of or thought of, um, but them having that background or that experience and share it with you or your team um, is absolutely invaluable. So again, it's kind of a collectiveness of I mean, you know, inclusiveness and hearing everyone out, but also giving them an opportunity to be inclusive, 
um, and then to open it up to you know not just your ideas, uh, but those of your team, um, and especially those that you serve. So for me in particular, um, being national undergrad rep, I think it's important for me to be able to not only know the people within my chapter and my region, but also have the experience of traveling here and to other regions to get to know more individuals of what makes up SHIP, right? Um, every region kind of has their own flavors and, um, and certain customs and traditions and way of operating in chapters. And it's been a really great experience just being able to meet chapter leaders, see what they do in their universities and the more I get to know them the better I think I get to do my job in representing them in the position that I'm in um, but on a personal note I think it's it's great to feel the warmth and the sense of familia that there really is within the organization like throughout the nation part of the things that people leave out whenever you're doing an interview is that they get nervous they think it's just business but you're talking to another human being another person I think leaving the social aspect out would be a hindrance towards someone's development to being a good person in general, right? Being able to teamwork with people, communicate. I think it's crucial in any engineering job because you're going to work with other people. So I think socializing is just an amazing way of teaching that without directly teaching it. and hiring managers because they give you the opportunity to grow within a career or whatever type of field you're going into. You've been to Baltimore already since yeah, yeah, like yeah. four or five, so coming back, you know, once you got the degree and you're an alumni, it's, it's also being able to network in a different manner. It's a, a lot of the same great environment and feeling that you get from a ship conference and professional development and all, but uh, it adds another layer of depth. Yeah, you, so you get another connection, like you feel you get another layer of connection, like people look at you as a, as a role model almost because, you know, you did it, you're out in the workforce, you're now um, a professional, and now people look up to you, people who are undergrads, they look up to you like, okay, how do I get to where he is? And we can help them, you know, we can help them uh, sort of give them the sort of sales tips that they need or any sort of tidbits or any advice that they need to, to progress in their career. Right, kind of build on that, you know, the team aspect, the team, mm -hmm. teamwork too. aspect yeah. is huge, you know. Uh, a, a lot of times that, that perception of engineers are non-social creatures, things of that sort, it's uh, very much not the case. My favorite memory of RLDC, I think it's just being in the regional meeting with all of your, well, all of our Region 5 Lobos and being able to learn the chant and just you know, having a good time with your chef familia is, I feel like, what more do you want? What more do you need? 